Hello, my beloved sisters and brothers. It's your girl, Dr. Shauna. So, I was looking at some of the messages I was receiving, and some people are, you know, they would love to go away on vacation with their crews, on a cruise or something with their kids. And the first question that came to my mind was, why don't they? Why don't they just go away? Like, I understand what's being said. Like, I understand the words that are being said. But why don't people go away on vacation, even if it's a mini vacation with their kids? And I always hear it, the money, right? People always say, I don't have enough money. If I had enough money, if I didn't have these bills, I would go away. But is it really the money that's stopping you from going away? Is it really the money that keeps us from, from enjoying ourselves and paying ourselves first? Is it really the money that keeps us from doing the things that we desire? And I ask that question. I'm not saying that this is going to be, this is going to apply to everybody. I'm not saying that. But I'm just thinking out loud because I used to be one of those people that used to say that until I realized what money is and how to use money and how, how to get the things that I want in life and do the things that I want to do in life and not have the, the mindset of lack, the lack, mindset of poverty. That mindset stopped me from doing the things that I want to do. And, and that's really what I want to just take a brief moment to say to, to everybody on here. I want to talk about that briefly because of the inboxes I've been receiving it, it really isn't the money and we have to really start to shift our thinking it really isn't the money and I know this is going to be so hard for so many people to fathom and so many people to just understand but it really isn't the money let me take it to you there was once upon a time where I used to always have that mindset that mindset that I didn't have enough I want to go on vacation with my kids but I don't have enough I want to be able to see different parts of the world but I don't have enough money but the truth is we really do have enough money we really do have enough money. And, and don't look at me and compare yourself to me. Look at yourself and let's, let's really think about what I'm about to say because we really do have enough money. I've been traveling for a long time before I became a Dr. Shona. I've been traveling for a long time before I became who I am and, and have what I have. I've been traveling for a long time. And when I made that decision to just get my ass up and go and take my kids with me and just enjoy myself was at the death of my mother. My mother died back in 2011. We are in 2019, right? But when my mother died in 2011, it was just like that. I packed up my car, I had my children, it was Christmas time, right? People would say, oh, that's the worst time to travel because it's the most expensive. It was Christmas time. And I said, I was not going to spend a Christmas here in New Jersey, New York with my children without my mother. And even though I had all my other family members, I had my aunties, my cousins, and we're a tight family. I had everybody, everybody, and everyone knew how I was feeling. Everyone knew where I was at. Everyone knew how my kids was impacted because my mother was my children's everything. And when I say everything, I never had to go clothes shopping for my children as long as my mother was alive. Every year, she went school shopping and clothes shopping for my children. Summer, winter, Christmas, my mother did everything with my children. And this is a woman who had no money. Had no money. I, I already told you guys. I, told, I shared with you guys transparently how I grew up. One bedroom apartment. Five of us in there on welfare, right? And I never knew I was poor. I never knew I was poor until I got to college, right? So this is not a mother who was able to provide everything in the world for us. But this lady did not allow her poverty to stop her from doing the things that she wanted to do. And we gotta get real for a moment. My mother was the kind of person that she would just take her money and put it on, put stuff on layaway. If the kids want to X, Y, and Z, she'll take them to the store. Real talk. She'll take them to the store, have my children pick out everything that they wanted, take it up to the counter, and put it on their way. And every two weeks, she'll come and put a little bit of money on it. A little bit of money, a little bit of money. And she was smart. So if she did it in the winter, she picked out nothing but summer clothes. So by the time the summer came, she would have already saved enough money and got the clothes out, and they would have had summer clothes. In the summer, she'll pick out all the, the winter clothes put it on layaway, and then by the time um, November comes, they will have their clothes. My mother was a small woman, no money, and this is how she did it. So when my mother passed away, when she died, when she transitioned, I packed in my car, no money. I found a place in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, 
that was taking us for one hundred and seven dollars for a whole week. A whole week, one hundred and seven dollars for a whole week, and it was a little condo. Do a little timeshare. Put all my my children. It was only two of them at the time. My two oldest children. I was a divorced mom, single woman raising my children. Put them in a the car. Drove eight and a half, nine hours to Murder Beach, or maybe it was 12 hours, something like that, Murder Beach, South Carolina, and we had our Christmas there, just us. We were in a pool, we went to museums, we stopped in D.C. on our way, I took them all around D.C., showed them all the historical sites, we got in a car, went to the next location, got them out, showed them the historical sites, made it down to south of the border, had dinner there, two hours later, we was, our hour later, we was where we needed to be. Woke up in the morning, went food shopping, put food in the refrigerator for enough of the days that we were going to be there, and we enjoyed ourselves. For a week, we enjoyed ourselves. Just my children and I. No money. No money. The only money that I had to spend was on gas, tolls, and I went food shopping. I took them out to a restaurant once to eat, and that was on Christmas. And they had so much fun. So much. They talk about it to the day, to this day. And from that moment on, every year, I made sure I did something with my kids. Every year, from the minute my mother transitioned from this earth, I made sure I did something. I don't care how expensive or how inexpensive it was. I did something with my children. Every year, we go away. Every year, my daughter, who is now 21 years old, every year, she comes to me and she says to me, what are we doing this year? What are we, because they've gotten so accustomed to going away with just me. And then when I got remarried, fell right into the line, and we all just went away every year, every year. So here's what I'm going to say to you guys. I posted a while ago, and some of you guys are already, thank you, Smith. I appreciate that. Smith is saying my mom's a short woman. I posted a while ago on the, the cruise that is coming up, the Mommy and Me cruise that's coming up in December 2020. We're all going away. I got some of y'all already signed up, so that's pretty dope. I probably should post the information again. But we're going on a Mommy and Me cruise, a Royal Caribbean Symphony of the Seas. That's one of their biggest ships. It's a beautiful ship. Y'all got to look it up, check it out, go to Royal Caribbean site. And just get, in, just get the mindset that you can do this. Just get the mindset that you can do this. You can't, you can't worry about, oh my God, I don't have the money. We have over 500 days left. Over, that's over a year. Over 500 days left to pay for this cruise. You can do it. You can do it. See, when we have the mindset of lack, the only thing we think about are all the barriers in our life for why we can't accomplish something. We got to remove that out of our thinking. Remove that out of your thinking. If you have the mindset of lack, you're only going to produce more things in your life that reflect how you think. So if your mindset is, I don't have enough to do it, more things are going to happen in your life to make that statement true. And I know I'm talking gibberish for some people, but some of y'all actually get it. There is no reason for some of you guys not to go away with your children every year. Create these memories with your children. Because life is already hard enough. Sometimes we just got to get away and just enjoy ourselves and do it with our children. And I know some people, one person said to me, well, I would, but I, I, when I go away on vacation, I don't want to be with my kids. I want to be away from them. They drive me up the wall. Yeah, but don't act like my kids don't drive me up the wall either. I go on cruises because they can do whatever the hell they want to do on the ship my husband and I could do whatever the hell we want to do right now I just got finished walking and running 2.5 miles yes I did work out that's why y'all see me like this right in my workout gear 2.5 miles I just got finished doing that and it got too hot so I sat my behind down I'm away from my kids right now I'm away from my husband right now I'm still gonna enjoy myself sometimes you just gotta have a family meeting on your cruise ship and this is what you're able to do have a family meeting and come out and be able to say to them listen y'all need to find something to do from this time to this time because i'm going to do me and do that and that's the reason why my girlfriend and i started doing the mommy and me cruises because it, it gave us that opportunity to do that it gave us the opportunity to create memories of our children and it gave us the opportunity to spend time by ourselves and then time with each other and then time as family and then we meet other people we meet other people and their children and it's a, good, it's a good thing for all of us just to be connected. And why wouldn't you want to do that? It shouldn't be money. You shouldn't, you shouldn't say to yourself, oh, if I had the money. You have the money. You have the money. You have an iPhone, you got the money. You got a, the newest droid, you got the money. 
If you drive in a car, you got the money. If you got a job, you got the money. The, the question isn't whether or not you have the money. The question is how are you spending your money? How are you spending your money? If you're eating out, make a sacrifice. Make, make a sacrifice. Stop eating out. You can't stop eating out for six months and save that money, right? Get a CD. Put your money in a CD so you won't spend it. Income tax time is about to come around. And I'm, I'm not telling you to spend all your income tax money on some damn vacation. I wouldn't do that. But if that's what you got to do, then do what you got to do. I love going on vacation with my children. Because maybe, maybe, maybe it's because of my own upbringing. My mom, and maybe some of you guys can relate. I don't know. I don't mind being transparent. Some people be afraid to be transparent. I, I don't care. I'll tell you about my life. I can tell you about when I was consciously dead. And I, you know, I was just kumbaya and living my kumbaya life the way I was raised. Love everybody. Do whatever you want. And I'm not saying not to love people. I'm not saying not to have tolerance over people. I'm not saying that. But, you know, y'all know some of us was raised in some weird, some weird upbringing. And I was one of those people. Not like that anymore. Trust me, I woke up at about 27 years old. I was like, what the hell am I doing? But nonetheless, my mom never went on vacation. My mom never left the Bronx. My mom never left the Bronx. I think she, she may have left once. Because I came down, I picked her up, brought her up to where I was at college, where I was living at in college. She stayed with me for a week, and then she wanted to go back home. She said she liked being away from home. My mom was somebody who never left the Bronx. Okay, maybe I should say she never left New York City, because she did go to Manhattan, she did go to Brooklyn, she did go to Queens. But my mother is somebody who never left New York City. My mother... My mother is somebody who never had a license. My mother never had a license. She never drove. She never traveled. She stayed right there in the Bronx. So whenever I had an opportunity to go away, it was from one of my aunts taking me, or my godmother and godfather taking me to Florida. Right? I went to Florida once with them growing up as a child. So I never ever got a chance to go away. So now that I'm a mom, I have told myself that that won't be my children's story. That would never be my children's story. I don't care. When I, when I made less money, when I made way less money, my children and I still went away. Like, I, I, never, I never wanted my children to not experience the other sides of the world. Because let me tell you, this is my opinion, and I'm going to get out of here soon. My mother never traveled. She liked to be home. When I became a mother, I said that was never going to be my children's story. Because when you travel, and maybe I'm getting kind of deep. Thank you, Samara. When you travel and your children are able to see other parts of the world, their mindset shifts. See, a lot of us, in my opinion, a lot of us, because, because there are too many of us who don't travel. I even know people who don't have their passport. Let me know in this, in this, field, this, um, this feed if you do not have a passport if you're bold enough to say that and it's no it's no big deal just tell me if you do not have a passport there's so many people that do not have a passport and they have opinions about everything in the world and they never even left their damn state i i, I don't understand people like that they have opinions about everybody and everybody else's belief system and everybody else's culture and they never even left the states Never even left. I love you too, Abdul. Never even left. People, like for example, this is just an example. And, and I want y'all to know, y'all, that my husband was joking. Because this is a saying that people like us grew up with people making these comments. So I want y'all to think that this was my husband's real mind. He was joking. But the other day, we were downstairs and my husband was saying to my son, um, Eat all your food. There's people in Africa starving, right? And so I heard them, and I turned around, and I said, have you ever been in Africa? Right? Have you ever been in Africa? And so he, he, he thought I was being, like, real serious, but I was just asking one question because, because I got triggered, and I know I got triggered. I got triggered because my mom and people in the family used to say the same thing. Eat all your food. These people in Africa starving. And I, as a child, believe this stuff. And this is, children believe a lot of things that they hear. 
In my field, we call it highly suggestible. And you guys who've been with me for a while, I did a video a few years ago where my son threw my wedding ring, ring off of the, the um, cruise ship. And through the, through the ancestors and the spirit of the God, we found my ring. I was only missing one diamond. We found our ring. And, and yes, my son threw my ring off the, the cruise ship. And I was telling people that we have to speak to children in a certain way in order for us to elicit the right information out of us. So I, I, I mean, to elicit the right information out of them. So what I'm saying is children are highly suggestible. And we don't watch some of the stuff that we say to our children and around our children. Well, some of us don't. And we say things like, eat all your food. People are starving in South Africa. Who, who says stuff like that? That's far from true. And I'm not saying in some areas it doesn't have truth, but what I'm saying is we, we can't make comments like that because then our children start to develop a belief system about our African sisters and brothers who are coming from the motherland themselves. And if the children have never gone over there for themselves to see it, they believe these things to be true. Right? So when I said to, when I said to my husband, have you ever been in Africa? And I know I call him off guard because he started, you know, him and him and, and laughing like I'm just joking. But I said, I know you're joking, but I'm asking you a question. Have you ever been in Africa? And so he's like, have you ever been in Africa? I said, I'm asking you a question. Have you ever been in Africa? And I said, because we're saying these things to, to him and I know you're joking, but he, he's, he doesn't know you're joking. He doesn't know you're joking. And then I said to my son, there are beautiful places in Africa. There's some gorgeous land in Africa, gorgeous communities in Africa that don't look nothing like America. And I said to my husband, but guess what? There are people starving in America. There are people who don't got nothing to eat in America and some of the, some of the way they live is better than how we live and they ain't got nothing to eat. Right? So I want to be able to, to tell people that we have to really make sure our children travel so that we don't raise our children up in some of the ignorance that we were brought up in. I don't know about you guys, but if my mother never, that's right, Samara, people are hungry next door. If my mother never traveled and she used to say things like that, eat all the food, there's people in other countries that are starving. Like, like there were in times we weren't starving. We were starving sometimes. What do you mean there's other people in other countries that ain't starving? Like, like we're all of a sudden better than the next person. No, we were starving too. What the hell are you talking about? But when we're small, we don't think about those kind of things. So I like to take my children with me whenever I, whenever I can, whenever I leave the country. This place I have gone without my children. But I love to take them with me whenever I can so that they can see how other people live. And they can be tolerant of other people. Right? I'm not saying that you have to be kumbaya with other people, but tolerance is something that develops through understanding. And when we don't have understanding of other people, we can barely be tolerant of other people. So I take my children with me other places so that they can learn about other cultures. We have been to Puerto Rico a thousand times. And my daughter and I was talking about this the other day, how after all these years of traveling, Puerto Rico still, in a lot of areas, still looks the same exact place. There are some living conditions that really just surprise us. It just really shocks us that that's how people live. But now, like my daughter said, I can understand why when people from Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Haiti, Jamaica, Trinidad, you name it, when they come from their, their countries over to our countries, how they start working extra hard and they start acquiring stuff, is because when you when you live like that, for some of these people, not all, but for some, for a lot of them, for a lot of them, when you live like that, it's not difficult to come here and want to do more, want to have more. Because when they look at America, they don't see America the same way many of us see America. They see America as the land of opportunity, the land of riches, the land of possibilities. So they have a much different relationship in America than those of us who are AKA Foundation of Black Americans, AKA Africans via chattel slavery, whatever. Like we are the ones that have a different experience. So we're salty. We're salty when it comes to America. 
we, we see the atrocities that continue to happen against us in America. But people, our Africans, brothers and sisters that's coming from the Caribbeans and other areas, they don't have that same experience. So they don't say it the same way. And the only way for me to be able to explain that kind of stuff to my children is to be able to take them with me different places and to show them different places, right? You want to see why Mexicans work so hard? Well, let me take you to the different areas of Mexico. We went to about four or five different areas of Mexico. And same story no matter where we go, unless, unless tourism is there, unless there's like the American hands are on it, like Cabo, right? Like Cancun, that's, um, that's white hands. White hands is on that stuff, right? We already know that. That's white hands for the, for the most part, coming and building up, going to wherever they're from, and then collecting the money. We already know that. But when you go into where they live at, and they have to get out of their house every day and hustle, and hustle every day. And so when my children see Mexicans coming to America and they're hustling every day, they have a different understanding and a different appreciation for what they see. And that's all I want them to do. I'm not saying we have to get online and with picket, thing, picket signs and go caping with Mexicans. I'm not saying to do that. If you want to do that, that's your business. I'm not saying to do that. I'm saying you understand a different tolerance of certain people. You understand how, okay, I can see why that's happening. But when you're not traveled, when the only thing you know is your own surroundings, it's hard to have an understanding for other people. It's hard to be able to see things from another person's perspective. Even, even in some areas, I've even taken my children, when we head south, taking them to areas that I know is filled with racist rednecks, right? And just showing them trailer parks. So my children can see this is what white trash looks like. Because I like to change their mindset, their narrative. I don't want them to, to look at every white person and think every white person is rich. And that's a fucking lie. Why, why would I want my children to believe lies? So allowing them, taking them to different places so I can be able to see who you see over here. Oh yeah, you see that she has no teeth? And I'm not trying to be funny. You see she has no teeth? Oh, you see how they're cussing out their kids? Get out over here, you stupid mother. How they're fighting their kids. And, I, and sometimes, like I told you, people that have been with me for a minute on this page, all the community members that have been with me, y'all know when I do people watching. Sometimes on Sunday, I call it I call it white people watching Sundays. I take my children. I'm being honest. I'm, I'm being honest. I take my children out, and we sit in one of their communities, and they just watch. And we, we, we have conversations later. Just like they watch us, I watch them, right? We have conversations later. Because the only reason why I'm doing it is because I'm teaching my children. Study other people. So that when you see the nonsense that you see on TV, your mind doesn't believe these things to be true. Your mind doesn't automatically say, oh, because they're white, they're rich. Oh, because they're Asian, they're smart. Right? Right? Your mind doesn't automatically think these things when you're traveled, when you're learned. Your mind sees it for what it is. But if you don't take your children out of your surroundings, and the only thing that they have to feed them information is YouTube or social media or the media, the mass media, news coverage, if that's the only thing your children have to go by, then guess what? They're gonna to start to believe in and interpret everything you're saying. And I've seen, I've seen the thoughts of our children work against us as parents because they're listening to our words or we're telling them this is what it is. This is, this, is how, this is how people are, but they're seeing something totally different on TV. They're seeing Kumbaya on TV. They're seeing everyone loving each other on TV. And, and that's not the real world. It's not the real world. So I take my children into different places. And, and guess what? Even if my children felt somebody was mistreating them, yeah, I correct the behavior on the spot. And with love, but I correct the behavior on the spot. But nonetheless, I let my children experience it. Because that's the real world. That's the real world. So let me take some of these questions. Hold on one second. Somebody's saying, I don't have a passport, but I do cruise. Yeah, so a passport is not needed for all cruise. So you're absolutely right, Leticia. As long as you're staying um, in certain areas, you don't need it. There are some areas where they tell you you need a passport. But um, you can go to Bahamas, no passport. You can go to Puerto Rico, no passport. You can go to any of the U.S. Virgin Islands, no passport whatsoever. So yes, that's true. Paula's saying, I don't have a passport, 
but I have been on cruises and I've traveled to other states. Absolutely, absolutely. Samara says, do we need a passport for this mommy and me thing? I think the areas that we're going, Samara, I do not think we need a passport for the areas that we're going. You can go ahead and ask um, the travel agent when I give you the information. <clears throat> I don't believe you need a passport for where we're going, okay? And, that, and, and don't let that stop you because there are some places where you don't be a tra passport. But I am going to say this to some of you guys. Cruises is one thing. Flying into some areas is another thing because they've been changing the laws. And somebody brought this to my attention last year when I went on, no, that wasn't even a whole year ago. That was almost a year ago in December. I went on a cruise and I met a lady at the airport and she was saying that there's, they changed the law, so be careful that certain places you do need a passport. And I didn't believe her. And she brought it up on it. Not that I didn't believe her, it's only because I wasn't familiar with it. I'm not gonna say I wasn't believe her. I said, really? Can you show me that? And she took her time, it took her a while to find it, but she found it on one of the government pages. And I can't remember where it was, but they break it down specifically because when all the changes started to happen with immigration, and the changes after 9-11, they started to change that rule. So you have to um, do some research, but for a lot of cruises, you don't, so you're right. Good morning, Charles, how are you? What's up, Tony, how are you? What's up, Ina, how are you? Yes, Tony's saying, take off the rose-colored glasses and see the world, absolutely. So Ina's saying, I'm from St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands. Yes, so at St. Croix, you don't need a passport either if you're going on a cruise to St. Croix. So I believe that St. Croix, if you're going on a cruise, I don't believe you need a passport there either. But I have a passport, so I don't really think about what, whether I need a passport or not. But Samara, if you don't have a passport, that's cool. It's important to get a passport regardless. So even when you contact me, if you contact me, I would, I would teach you and walk you through that process as well. Because I realize that some of us, some of us, we just, not that we don't want to do it, we just don't know how to do it. And even though we say, just go ahead and read the paper, go ahead and read the internet. I say that sometimes too, like, duh, do a Google search and read it. It's not that serious. But then I realized, maybe because I'm a therapist, but then I realized that it's not that people can't Google and it's not that people can't find out the information. When you're finding out something like this, sometimes it becomes overwhelming for certain people and their anxiety starts to come up. And I don't expect everyone else to have patience with them, but this is what I do for a living. So I help people work through these emotional um, reactions and I help people work through these fears that they have, even though they're unrealistic fears, I help them to see the difference. I help them to become empowered through it. So, so if this is an anxiety that some people have, I have no problem walking people through the process because it can be overwhelming, especially if you have children. It's not as simple as people make it sound. If you have children and those children have a daddy or a mommy that's still alive, you gotta either A, have a different form notarized to override the parent's signature, or B, you're gonna need that other parent to sign for it. So we, we really don't understand how, how these laws work. That's why I tell people all the time, my motto is saving black families and saving black relationships. And you guys who know me know that. I don't really come on this part, on this platform, to talk about relationships. That's on my counseling page where I talk about relationships. But you guys know, I know it's not possible to stay in every relationship that you are in. I know that's not possible. I know that sometimes relationships just have to end. But I say that we have to be able to co-parent with the children. Because when, we, when we're not in one alignment, we're not. This is what I hate about certain cruises. You can't get around this nonsense. Sometimes I just like to talk. The hell she talking about? Ice skating. Ice skating. See? At 11 a.m. Okay. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. Okay. 
it's crazy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You see what I'm talking about? Everything is sales. Everything, no matter where you go, everything is sales. Oh my god. This is crazy. Oh my god. Shut the hell up. It's crazy. I can't. I can't. I'm getting over here. I will come back and talk to you guys because she ain't going to shut the hell up. And this is annoying as hell for me. So, um, I hate that I have to cut this short, but I can't. I can't compete with her. I'll speak to you guys later. Have a blessed one. I'll be back on a little bit later on today, okay? And I'll see you all. Have a blessed one.